okay. <laughs> First, let me start off by acknowledging Chancellor Milliken. Uh, I want to give a public apology to the Executive Vice Chancellor. Uh, sometimes my stomach growls very loud. <laughs> And I know he heard it said it next to me. He's not going to say so, but I know he heard it, so it's my public apology. <laughs> uh, I would also like to acknowledge the 135 community uh, partners, the representatives that's present. Uh, I remember when I started, it was around 95, 96, and now it's at 135. That's great. Uh, now we're going to get to the fun part. Now, a lot of you don't know. Some of you may know me from the videos and from stories you've heard. And a lot of you know I've graduated from John Jay. Don't chair yet. Don't chair yet. Okay, chair. But <laughs> what a lot of you don't know is that I also graduated with an associate from City Tech. So I remember when we first started uh, the first year, we had training we had to do. And one of, one of the games we played, we had to try to remember everybody's name in the room without looking at the name tags. So I kind of played that game when Chancellor Milliken was pointing out everybody. So I'm not gonna look at the paper. I'm gonna go by sections. So let's start with QC. <laughs> Next we have BMCC. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have a school that impressed me from the jump. They were super loud, and they're not even that big. Who am I going to say? Because you all look like you know who I'm going to say. CSI. Good stuff. Okay, behind CSI, we have Medgar Evers. Now it gets tricky. Uh, <laughs> Lehman. <laughs> City College. <laughs> City Tech. <laughs> and last but not least, John Jay College. John Jay. <laughs> Okay, everybody simmer down now. Thank you, simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. Okay, I promised Rachel that I would not be here too long. I have a habit of speaking a little bit longer than I should, so I'm gonna try to make this quick. Okay, so when I was first asked to do the keynote speech for today, uh, Rachel and the team, Rachel and Noel, we got together, we started to plan. Um, I prepared a speech and um, we were, we were going through the edits. And when we did the rehearsal, the speech was good. I write good speeches. But it just wasn't me. Like, I'm the type of person, if something has truly affected me, changed my life, I don't really need paper or speech to talk about it. I can tell you about CUNY Service Corps from the heart, as we say, off rip, because it really changed my life. Uh, I, it was three years ago when I joined the CUNY Service Corps, and till this day, I'm still experiencing the, the, the life-changing effects of the CUNY Service Corps. So let's start by talking about September 11th, 2001. I remember I was in the sixth grade. I was in the sixth grade when it happened. We were sitting in class. I was sitting next to my friend Cody, and I looked out the window, and we all saw the smoke rising in the distance. And we really didn't understand what was going on. We were young. I remember the teachers mentioning it, but, you know, it really didn't have any effect on me. I'm like, okay, you know, that sounds horrible, but I really didn't understand until I got home and I was with my parents and I saw the tears in their eyes and I saw the live footage of the plane crashing into the buildings and you hear stories of people jumping off of the buildings, knowing that either way, they were going to meet their death. And that, that was just a day that New York City learned that even though we're the greatest city in the world, 
somehow we were left vulnerable. But what I took from that is that I'm a New Yorker, so I can say this, and you all know if you're, if you're a New Yorker, is that the, the normal perception of a New Yorker is that it, we're kind of like, you know, the concrete jungle, every man for themselves, every woman for themselves, go get us, we gotta get it. You live in the neighborhood for 10 years, you don't know your neighbor's name. <laughs> Nobody says good morning, good evening, you just, hey. <laughs> you're lucky if you get that, hey. And then everybody goes into their homes. But after, when, when that happened, you saw first responders rushing into the building. When people were trying to get out, you saw people going into the building to save lives. You saw volunteers coming to help clear debris to try to save more lives. You saw people opening their homes, their churches, um, borrowing out their cell phones so people can make calls, something that's a risky move in some areas of New York. You don't want to give your cell phone to everybody. <laughs> they might run away with it. But basically, we saw how New Yorkers can join together and how we can serve the community and how we can unite instead of what we're normally known for, which is the individuality. So that was great. So let's just give a round of applause for September 11th and all the efforts and the first responders and all the volunteers that made it happen. Okay, now a little bit about me. My name is Dami Lola Iroko. It's a mouthful. I'm Nigerian. I'm Nigerian descent. My Nigerian's in the building, all right? <laughs> Uh, I grew up in the same 10 block radius of Bedford-Stuyvesant uh, my whole life. Same 10 block radius. We started on Monroe Street, moved a few blocks down to Lafayette, went back up to Franklin, and that's where we've been, you know, my family. Um, it wasn't always easy, you know, growing up in that environment uh, at that time. Now it's great. I can leave my window down all night, I'm not scared. I go back. <laughs> I find everything in the car. But back then, it wasn't the greatest environment to grow up in. And I remember sometimes I would make the wrong choices because even though my parents were very strict, you know, strict religious um, Christian background, strict Nigerian upbringing, education was the only thing that mattered. Not, you wanted to do sports? Great, who cares? <laughs> you got a 98? Who's Nigerian in here? What's the question to ask you? Where, no, 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 I'm not asking you to chair. What's the question? Where's the other two points? <laughs> No, I got a 98, it was the other two points. So education was the only thing that mattered, but when you grow up in that environment, and you know you have parents who work, and you're outside, and you're dealing with what you're dealing with, sometimes you do what you feel like you have to do to fit in. And I, always didn't, I didn't always make the right decisions. But thankfully, there was a program. Um, I live close to the, um, the 88th precinct, and there was, a, there was an officer, Officer Wallen. For some reason, this guy had my ticket, he had my number. I was always getting caught by Officer Wallen. Playing hooky, Officer Wallen. Vandalism, Officer Wallen. And no matter what it was, and he was this big guy, big muscular bald head, and he would always, I'm gonna tell your father, and he would go talk to my father and everything. And I remember finally he decided to put me in the police athletic league boot camp. And I used to go every Saturday, I had to drag my little sister with me because I had to watch on Saturdays, and we'd do push-ups, sit-ups, and we'd get taught about how to make a difference in our community instead of being destructive. And the pro that program really played a part in the change that took place in my life from early. So I'm thankful for that. All of that to say, when I heard about the CUNY Service Corps, I know J some John Jay students, Mr. Walsh, Noel, you've heard the story multiple times. When I heard about the CUNY Service Corps, it was really kind of like, at first it was kind of like competition. Let me see if I can do this, you know? like. I wanna see if I have what it takes to make it because as everybody knows, all of you who've made it went through a vigorous recruiting process. It wasn't just like you walked in the door like, hey, give me the shirt. It was, <laughs> you, you had to do what you had to do. You had to write the essay, right? You had to write the, uh, right? Anybody? You had to write the essay. You had to go through the group sessions. Um, I remember the Dean of Students for John Jay, I was in his circle and, and we were talking and, and, and they were watching us. I remember one thing Mr. Walsh said was to stand out. Straight up, he looked us straight in the face, and anybody who knows Mr. Walsh, he's a very straight up guy, uh, doesn't beat around the bush. He said, I need you all to stand out. So, and that's what I did. Uh, when I saw the different uh, community partners that were involved, I was excited. I'm seeing programs I never knew existed. I'm seeing, you know, advocates, I'm seeing the Urban Justice League, I'm seeing participatory budgeting project. I'm seeing a bunch of programs that in a community like mine, we needed, but we never knew. We didn't know where to go to find these things, find out these things about how to get help. The closest thing we had to us is across the street was the welfare office. We, we didn't know anything about these programs. So that kind of even 
motivated me more to get involved because I'm like, okay, if I can learn some of these things, I can take it back and we all can benefit. So that's where it came from. Um, I was placed in a participatory budgeting project and I wanted to be placed there because for, I'm just fascinated with politics. I watch um, Hardball with Chris Matthews. Uh, I watch Al Sharpton, MSNBC. I just love politics, the red tie. <laughs> you don't get it, okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, so I, I was happy to be placed there and just like it's gonna happen with some of you guys, when I first walked into the office, I was telling Rachel, I was really nervous. I'm not really the type of guy who gets nervous too much, but not really nervous in the sense of what's gonna happen. It was kind of like, okay, am I gonna be making copies all day? Or what's gonna, you know, what, is, what are gonna be my tasks? And I remember I was telling Rachel again, the first person that walked up to me, Hazel, Hazel Martinez, she walked up to me and she said, Dami, I need 100 copies of these. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna make copies then. But what ended up happening was we had, a, we, we had our first, part, okay, we had our first participatory budgeting meeting. And basically participatory budgeting, what it is is that the council members that take place in participatory budgeting, they have, um, they have funds that they allocate. They allocate a million dollars from their discretionary funds to the community through participatory budgeting. And they say, okay, you know what, community, you know what's best for you. You go through this process of participatory budgeting and you decide how to spend a million dollars, but it has to be on capital projects. So basically that's what we were doing. Um, I remember the first meeting, it was like a room like this. It wasn't even a quarter full like this, but it was a room like this. And I remember at the end, they wanted me to draw up some type of board and they were talking about getting something else done and nobody else was volunteering, some of the veterans. So I said, I'll do it. And they were like, really? I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And they were like, well, can you do it by Saturday? It's like Thursday. I'm like, I can do it by Saturday. Like, I just wanted to show that I can do it. I wanted to show off a little bit. Like, yeah, I'm from John Jay. I'm from Cutie. I can do this. So they let me do it. After that, it was a wrap. I mean, I started leading the meetings, coming from work in my T-Mobile uniform. Everyone's like, okay, who's leading this meeting? I'm like, me. Like, everybody's older than me. Um, I'm contacting city agencies on behalf of, of um, tenants in um, the NYCHA, um, the buildings. Um, I'm having site visits at Tilden High School to make sure um, the basement and the roof is feasible for some of the projects we want to get done. I'm writing proposals. I was a man, <laughs> you know? And before I joined the service corps, I never would have thought I'd find myself doing something like that. Like, that seemed too big for me. But that's what happened, and that's because of the CUNY Service Corps. And that's why I said I'm forever, forever thankful and grateful to the CUNY Service Corps for the position I am in today. So please, let's get a round of applause for the CUNY Service Corps. Okay, I'm not finished, so I'm almost finished. Okay, so where was I? So after the, uh, during my stint with the CUNY Service Corps, I did what Mr. Walsh said. I tried to stand out. I did everything I can to stand out. Um, it didn't take too long, but I got to go to a meeting. Okay. Give it up for Chancellor Milliken. I apologize that I ran him out the building. Please forgive me. Okay, but I'm almost finished. So, um, so I remember. Like I said, Mr. Walsh told me to stand out, so I stood out. I had a great manager in Noel. Uh, Rachel was behind me. Funny how I met her, it was on the train, on the seven train. I was with Valerie. Hey, by the way, this is the director of the CUNY service call. I'm like, whoa, like that was just random how it happened. We were both on the seven train, and I just stood out. Next thing you know, I'm throwing the first pitch at the Cyclones game. Um, I and another student, we got to speak at City Hall in front of the Higher Education Committee. I'm here. You know what I mean? Like all of these opportunities are there for you too. You really just have to stand out. You have to understand that this opportunity is not something that everybody gets. There's not a lot of students who are sitting where you're sitting right now. There's a lot of students like me before who just take the train, go to school, take their classes, get good grades or bad grades, whatever they get, and they go home. You guys have the opportunity to take everything you learn, everything you're taught, everything that CUNY has prepared you for, and to exercise it in the field. A lot of you don't know what you want to do when you graduate. Some of you do know. Whichever side of that spectrum you land on, the CUNY Service Corps only benefits you because you're going to learn skills that you've never learned. Google Docs, 
I had no idea what that was. I thought Google was, type in the search, click Google, Gmail. So first thing they asked me, do you know how to use Google Docs? I'm like, what? <laughs> What's Google Docs? S things like that that I've learned how to use Excel, how to use MailChimp, how to speak to people, proper email etiquette, how to send a proper email. These are things you're going to learn on your placement only if you want to. You know what I mean? Only if you want to put in the work and you want to put in the time to decide what do you want to get out of this placement. Because I know you're not here for the money. Like, we appreciate CUNY even blessing us with money because this is something a lot of people would pay to do. But if you're here for the money, you should really just get up and exit. We'll all close our eyes so you won't even be embarrassed. We'll close our eyes, you stand up and you leave. Because it's not about the money. It's about the experience that you're going to get, how it's going to catapult you forward in your journey and your adventure through life. I want to talk about something that's very dear to me, and that is a company that I founded with my, with my partner. He's not here. Uh, we founded a company called Custom Styles 365, and basically what we do is kind of what um, I've learned from the CUNY Service Corps. We advocate and we promote, manage, even fund inner city youth that has a talent, a vision, and just doesn't have the means necessary to get where they want to go. So if you're a dancer, writer, singer, whatever it is you do, if you need help, you can come to us. We'll teach you how to dress. We'll teach you how to write. We'll teach you how to promote yourself so that when you're ready, we'll, we'll bring you out into the field and we'll hold your hand and we take you where you need to go until you're ready to do it on your own. Now, this is something that before the CUNY Service Corps, I would never have tried to do. I was satisfied just working in T-Mobile. You need a Galaxy S6, I got it. You need a Galaxy S5, I got it. iPhone, you got an iPhone problem, I got it. But <laughs> being in the CUNY Service Corps, and learning that I can leave, I can talk to people, I can talk to you and you. I can look you in the eye and tell you what I've learned, and I believe it because it's something that I live. It kind of put that idea in my head. It's like, hey, what if I take what I learned from the CUNY Service Corps and translate it to the community at large? That is what CUNY is hoping that you will do, that at the end of your internships, at the end of your placements, you will take what you've learned and translate it to the community at large. So I'm just going to end it by telling you there's certain things that you have to know. If you don't remember anything I said, you're going to your placements. Please be respectful of your supervisors and your managers at your placements. Just like you're taking a chance, they're taking a chance on you. They don't know you from Adam and Eve, and they still have a business to run. They have goals they need to meet. They have deadlines they need to meet. So just be respectful. You know, a lot of times as young people, we don't like to be challenged openly, and we don't like to be spoken to some type of way. But at the end of the day, we're all going to be adults. We're all going to go into the work field, and you have to learn how to act and conduct yourself as an adult. So be respectful. Be on time. Nothing shows lack of dedication more than you can't even get out of bed to get to your placements on time. It's not acceptable. you got to be on time. And then also remember, remember, whatever you do, you represent yourself, you represent your family, and you represent CUNY. So do it well. Okay, guys? Okay, guys? So with that, enjoy your placements. Thank you for the opportunity.